If you had all the money you will ever need, how would you spend your life? I used to ask this question to incoming members of my college fraternity. Many of them would respond with impulse answers, like, exactly what I'm doing now. It was fairly obvious they were either lying to me or to themselves. They didn't want to vocalize a dream that seemed too far out of reach. It's a scary proposition to put a dream out there that is likely destined to fail. It took me a decade of experience to go out and chase something grand, and I don't take a second of any of this for granted. Here I am being sent to another country to fish and to film some of the wildest creatures the world has to offer. For the next three days, five of us will be living aboard a 30-foot boat, eating, sleeping, and doing everything in between. Together, we had one mission, land of fish we would talk about for the rest of our lives. Mexico. Don't really have cell service. I'm supposed to be linking up with a driver from uh, the charter that we're going to be fishing with called Snook Mafia. We're supposed to be sending someone here. Don't know who he is, but hopefully that goes pretty seamlessly. Hopefully my bag made it here, but man, this is shaping up to be an awesome trip. Hopefully by this evening, we will have linked up with everyone and then we'll be on a boat so that tomorrow morning we will be fishing an awesome set of islands. After a few minutes, my phone actually started working and I was able to get a message over to the guys. I found out that fellow content creator, Jorge Acosta was gonna be on his way over and picking me up from the airport. What's up, man? Welcome to the video. Nice to meet you, man. We hopped in the truck with our driver, who was actually the father of one of the charter captains that we're going to be fishing with. But when these guys invited me to go to a local restaurant here in Puerto Vallarta, I could not turn it down. I was actually thinking that this might be one of the last good meals that I actually have, seeing that for the next three days, we're going to be living on a boat. After that delicious breakfast, we are now here at the marina and everyone's just gearing up. I had pretty much all my stuff relegated to like three bags. Um, everything is waterproofed, ready to go on the boats, didn't pack anything that wasn't, um, couldn't get wet. So I have stuff in like Ziploc bags, waterproof bags, Pelican cases, because I didn't really know what to expect. This trip, we're gonna be sleeping on the boats. I don't know if I've told you guys that yet. Um, so it's essentially a very rustic trip, but super stoked. There has been a good amount of fish around a bunch of different species. And uh, man, I'm just fired up because I think this is gonna be one heck of a trip. So guys, I want to introduce you to the most popular YouTuber, fishing YouTuber in Latin America. No, no, <laughs> this <not>. is Jorge. <laughs> Hello guys. Uh, I'm having fun here with Adrian, with Captain Carlos and Ryan. <laughs> Super cool dude, Meet him, met him today. We're just hanging around, waiting for Adrian to get here. And we're waiting for him. As always. As always, <laughs> as always, do. Adrian is the latest guy always on the trip. Uh huh. But we're ready. We're drinking uh, some Modelos here, talking fishing, and having fun. Hopefully, we can get a good trip. What do you want to catch this trip? Uh, for me, it's all for the Cuberas. Cuberas and rooster fish. I'm here for literally whatever <laughs> Captain Carlos wants to put us on. If it's pulling drag or bending the rod, that's what I'm about this trip. So really, really fired up. I'll have Jorge's channel linked down below if you guys speak Spanish or into fishing in Latin America. This guy's been doing it for a very, very long time. 
We still had some time to kill, so we stopped by a local restaurant, and man, this food was phenomenal. I had a little bit more time to make friends with oh, one of the locals yeah. here, and then it was just about time to get on the boat and get loaded up. Pretty surreal feeling getting on the boat the night before in order to be fishing in the morning. You know that you're going after something epic if you have to do that. After a long day of travel, we are finally on our way out. We have about eight hours of ride time to get to the fishing grounds where we're gonna go. We're not in a super rush because we have plenty of time before sunrise when the bite's gonna actually start, so we might stop off in the middle of the night, catch some bait, but man, I'm excited. A lot of travel to get to where we are, and uh, hopefully there's some monster fish waiting for us on the other side. Good morning. It's a little after 6.30. We all are just waking up now. So this is where I slept last night. Nice pillow with my um, clean clothes in a Ziploc bag. And everything feels really, really damp. It was rough in some areas where we were driving through last night, so we were kind of banging and getting sprayed. So, in a sleeping bag, but also in my rain gear. Jorge did not sleep very good. <laughs> That's it's okay. okay. It's okay, the fish I are gonna wake to, you up. I didn't come here to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Within 30 minutes of waking up, we found what we were looking for. There is a giant school of spinner dolphins, and what oh comes with those God. dolphins is yellowfin tuna. We pulled up alongside those, and it was time to fish. Okay, got you guys on the GoPro. We have a big school of dolphins that are moving in front of us. You guys can't really see it because they're kind of far away. But supposedly the tunas will follow and feed with the, with the spinner dolphins. So we're going to pull up to the school, see what happens. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hooked up. Oh! He's there, he's there. Oh yeah, he's charging boys. He's charging. What a way to start a Mexico trip with the top water blow up outside of the school of dolphins. That was sick. Come on, buddy. Of course, you like to go by the motors. Woo -hoo -hoo. Man, that was awesome. Captain's like, throw literally right on top of the dolphins. I was like, okay. Three pops, got hammered. Come on up, buddy. Yeah, sir. <laughs> Yellowfin. Sashimi. Breakfast. Sashimi serve. Woo! Yeah. Let's go. Little yellowfin, y'all. Smoke the popper. Ton of fun. We're getting the boat real dirty right now, but beautiful fish. Love to see it. Oh, there we go. We got a little wash off action. Look at that. That's gonna be breakfast for us. Smoke the popper outside of School of Dolphins. Man, maybe we're gonna see some super cows this trip. They get them up to 300 pounds here, so we will see, man. So cool. Picture <laughs> buddy. Dude, look at all of them. They got these weird inverted dorsals where their dorsal looks like it's backwards compared to what you would see on like a bottlenose dolphin. These things are cool, they're called spinner dolphins. Oh, that was so this fun. Snook Mafia crew consisted of three guys. You had Captain Carlos, who his English accent cracked me up because he sounds like straight up California surfer bro. But this guy's eyes were phenomenal. Every time I thought I spotted something on the skyline, he had seen it five minutes earlier. Next up, you have Adrian, who 
is the creative eye for Snook Mafia. We had some great conversations about photo and video. This guy is a whiz behind the lens, and he captured some incredible photo content as well as some incredible video content, and he continues to do that on all of these Snook Mafia trips. Then lastly, you have Chico, Chicote. Um, he had a bunch of different nicknames. I believe his actual name is Ishmael. But he doesn't speak very good English, but this man's fishing ability was phenomenal. His cooking ability was phenomenal. And he was just a great dude to be around. It was just a lot of fun to fish with this guy. We didn't get any more bites from tunas around that school of dolphins. So I used the time to uh, get myself a little hygiened and then talk with the guys, BS, learn kind of what the rest yeah. of the plan was for the rest of the day. Fresh gasolina. Literally siphoning it from this big old gas jug. So now we are sailing and, and trying to find uh, some spots we have marked in the GPS and we are to try to find some mahis, mahis spots. You know, we have like pumps, parts in the water with buoys and this is what we are looking for now. We see a lot of beers in there so it's, it's just, just time. You know? After completely botching the first attempt, we pulled up to this thing waking on top. Just literally this V cutting through the water that they told me was going to be a big Dorado. I had no clue what it was, but I was going to cast at it if they told me to. Okay. Sounds good. I got him. Right there, bro. Right there. Go, go, go. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, dale, 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 go, 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 Yep. You're okay. Stop again. Oh my god, that was sick. You got it? Wow. That was so cool. We saw this thing waking on top, y'all. Cast out in front of it. Absolutely hammered the stick bait. So uh, one hook. See. That was cool. Oh, and now he's getting pissed off. Oh my god, the cute Amateur. It's first day. Ah, bien. Heck yeah, there we go. Welcome to Mexico. Yeah, man, those PKKs absolutely got them. Those are the Raptor Z3Os. There we go. A beautiful bull dolphin, big old Dorado. Just absolutely hammered the stick bait as soon as it got in front of him. I think we saw this same one earlier and I made a bum cast and then we just saw him waking on top again, that big old fin coming out of the water. God, these fish are just incredible, man. Just absolutely incredible. So sick, so, such a fun presentation. These things feel like they're the king of the ocean because you hook them sometimes and just like this one did, they don't even care that you hook them. They just swim right to the boat. And they're like, what are you gonna do, man? And then you stick a gap in them and they freak out. So <laughs> super cool fish, awesome presentation. Yeah. Welcome to Mexico. Nice. <laughs> Chef Chico. <laughs> Lunch is served. 
Thanks to Chico. Mm -hmm. After a little more traveling, we made it to our afternoon's destination, this ridiculous island, which looked like one of the fishiest places I had ever seen. And remember to hit the thumbs up button if you guys are liking today's video. It helps immensely. This is why I love traveling, man. I <laughs> never see stuff like this, just this giant island, giant mountainous island out in the middle of the ocean. You know that there's gonna be some epic fish here. This island's covered up in a bunch of birds, waves crashing, you know that there's rock piles here. We're gonna throw some big stick baits and poppers. This might be the area that we have some shots at some monster cubera snapper, which for me, a monster cubera on a lure, that's a bucket list fish. And that's that's something that I know I or I have been chasing and I'm gonna continue to chase. So let's cross our fingers and let's get to fishing. Yeah. Whacked it though. Whacked the stick bait. Up the retrieve, do a little bit faster. We've had a little bit of a dry spell throwing the lures. But we got something. Something to bend a rod. slump buster we haven't caught much in a couple hours but nice jack crevel smoked the uh the stick bait and uh these guys pull man catch them on the east coast or the west coast i don't mind catching them they're a ton of fun and uh they bend a rod and they keep us entertained now we're gonna try and get back out there hook up to a cubera rooster fish something that maybe a bluefin trevally never caught one of those before so let's get this guy back in the water ready three two one Woo. Nice. So I got a lot of bites on this guy in Panama. The Cubera, and this is a Cubera popper, literally called Cubera. This is a 125. I caught a lot on the 150 in pink. I'm gonna give this guy a try, cast around these rocks. Chico just caught this barred snapper on a little jig. I've never caught one of those before. They're really cool. They look like Kind of a mixture of like our mutton snapper and like a sheep's head because they got like interesting teeth. Very, very cool looking fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So right here, Jorge hooked up to and lost a Cubera in about three seconds. He was throwing a stick bait over a rock pile. He hooked up, the fish pulled drag, and boom, he got broke off immediately right through a 100-pound leader. And early in the trip, I was joking with Chico because I was making fun of him for tying up some 200-pound leader. And immediately after this, he says to me in Spanish, you see why we fish 200-pound leader now? Is it? I, I saw Finn. <laughs> so as quickly as the fishing was heating up, it actually died and that area just stopped producing any bites. So we were off to move to a different area to do a different type of fishing. So we just pulled up to this deeper spot or well i guess it's not as deep as we've been fishing today we just pulled up to this jigging spot i'm gonna drop down see if we can pull something up oh there we go hooked up on the bottom not giant but we hooked up chico caught a little african pompano what'd you catch adrian 
Pompano. Let's see what we got. Okay. He woke up a little bit. You have me? Yeah, I got you. No, don't do that. That's gonna make it. Oh, okay. Oh, off. Oh, man. There they are on the drop. On the drop. Oh, no more. Oh, man. There's a giant school of them down there. Check that out. It's like, it's like an African pompano. Got the long tracers. Super cool looking. They're hammering the jigs. There's a giant school of them down there. But just very, very cool fish, man. Very, very cool. We're going to let them go. Fun on the jig. These things are literally like not even letting it hit the bottom. You're just dropping down and just feel them hammer it. There we go. Hooked up. It feels like another one of those pompano. They literally ate it and were swimming the jig up. This was a ton of fun. I think we sat on the spot for probably around three hours or so. Just dropping down and hooking up back to back. Multiple triple and quadruple headers. We kept a couple of these guys for the dinner table or, you know, to ice down and bring home. But a lot of them we just caught and then immediately released. After hours of casting with no bites, this was a welcome flurry of activity. Just look okay. at how pretty these fish are, man. BKK Lentis, double hooked in the lower jaw. Look at these crazy little streamers on them. So the, Amer the, the American Africa Pompano, the, the African Pompano that we catch in the United States has these when they're little. And then as they get bigger, they start to lose the streamers. I call them streamers with tracers is what most people call them. Um, but just a super cool fish. And it's crazy how many are down there because we're getting hit so fast. This fish, these fish are just absolutely hammering it. But we are going to snap a quick pick of this sweet little fish and then we're going to get him back in the water. After all that jigging fun, we moved into this island. Unbeknownst to me, a couple of us were actually going to be camping on this island tonight. I guess there was just a miscommunication. I thought we were going to sleep on the boat. But before we went to camp, we decided to take a couple more casts, do a little bit more jigging really close to the rock structures because you just never know what's going to be around. Jorge hooked up on the stick bait, his little Almaco jack, as well as a couple of random things got caught on the jigs. One really nice snapper, which I didn't manage to get footage of. And Adrian hooked up big time on what I thought could be a big Cubera snapper on a jig. My man's been getting worse by this fish. Oh! Come on! Oh, don't let him do it to you! Unfortunately, I was wrong on that assumption, but it was still a great fight for him. This Almaco Jack, these things brawl. I honestly think they're one of the pound for pound hardest fighters out there. There you go. Yeah. What do we got? We got something little. Oh! <laughs> Super poisonous. I don't think. That's actually big for the species. Look at that interesting little guy. That's like a crazy little grouper looking thing. Just smoked the Johnny Jig one drop. That thing is interesting. Never caught anything looking like this. Very interesting. Dude, look at those teeth. He's got teeth kind of like a strawberry grouper. Those are wild. Wow. Look at that, guys. Oh, and he's got like some wild stuff in his throat. We are done fishing for the day. Yeah. Now we're headed to the island. We're gonna camp on the island. So 
This should be interesting, but it's probably going to be better than sleeping on the boat last night, especially while we were running and getting sprayed and everything like that. So I'm actually looking forward to sleeping on dry land. As we approached this frigate bird covered island, I had so many questions and really had no clue what the heck was going on. But I figured that most of those questions would be answered in time. So I focused on just filming a little bit and taking it all in and just, you know, going with the flow for lack of a better term on this one. There were commercial fishermen all over the beach. And then we started walking in the direction of, I guess, what used to be a research facility. They are everywhere. So this island is now designated as a national park. Originally, it was home to a research facility in the 80s, which then closed in the 90s. And then eventually the Mexican government dubbed it a national park that people could camp on. But the main stipulations are that they have to have, the campground has to have as little impact on the environment as possible. Island, like the land part, it is a national park. The water around it is where exactly where the park ends right now. Mm -hmm. But right now, but yeah, it's a national park. Oh wow! This is our sarandial. This is our, the snapper we just caught. <laughs> the snapper, this pargo sarandial. And they cooked it for us right over there. <laughs> yeah. Just now, can you smell it? Yeah, <laughs> no, it smells amazing. What is, what is the preparation called? Uh, sarandial, pescado sarandial. Yeah. They open it up and they put some uh, sauces in, uh, and spices and whatever, and they just uh, grill it on their own uh, uh, wood. On wood and it's bulky, it's, it's, it's really good. Wow, that looks amazing. There's a bunch of rules here. There's no drinking alcohol. There's no, um, like, uh, everything is sustain sustainable. This roof we have over our heads, uh, it gathers spring water, and that's the water they use. We we're gonna use to shower ourselves, um, also for the restrooms. And so we got us a whole meal prepared. Snapper that Chico caught like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> All on this crazy little island. I didn't even know any of this was here, man. This is wild. Didn't know we were gonna be doing this. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest to you, me neither. This is a surprise from our Snook Mafia dudes. Yeah. All right, and here we are set up for the evening. I, um, the other guys were nice enough. They doubled up in one of these tiny little tents and I looked out and I'm sleeping solo. Um, pretty darn hot in here. It was freezing last night on the boat. Now it's a little bit warm, but uh, I'm gonna go to sleep to the th sound of a thousand frigate birds. Um, and tomorrow we're getting up early. I'm gonna be back on the boat, back chasing some monsters. So I'll catch you guys then. Get woke up to all these frigate birds squawking. Definitely uh, nature's alarm clock. Beautiful day out here. Skies look clear. I see the boat. We're just sipping some coffee, um, getting a quick little breakfast, and then we're gonna pack the stuff up, get on the boat, and uh, start casting our lives away, man. There's some big fish out there. Had some mistakes yesterday, had some losses yesterday. Um, I really want a big cubera man that's like the fish that is going to haunt me until i get one and probably still will haunt me even after i get one but i'm gonna quit yapping let's pack this stuff up and get back on the boat these guys will never not be super cool that's crazy things are everywhere there's also poop all over the ground <laughs> That's a very good picture. All these, they are uh, like fishermen shacks. Uh, they're not permanently, they don't live permanently here. Yeah. But uh, whenever the fishermen they come, they just stay in one of those. Like uh, commercial yeah. fishermen, right? Like commercial, like, commercial yeah. fishermen, yeah. So all, uh, all the people kind of put them together. They, they make sure they don't fall apart. Uh, hurricane take all of these out really quick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they 
use them. Like they stay here for a week. They, mm. they, they live there and they go away and then other fishermen come. And they mm. stay there. Yeah. yeah, this is the perfect little wind block. When we were sitting in here, there was no wind at all on the boat. But then uh, as soon as you get out far, you can feel it. So it's a perfect little cove to do all this in and you can beach the pangas. Yeah, well. <laughs> you see the night. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we'll, I'll, um, I'll have Adrian send me some of the photos. Yeah. Last night he woke up at like four in the morning and went out and got like time lapses, took night photos of the Milky Way. They're incredible. I'm really jealous actually, because he, he does some incredible artistic work. Really cool to see, but I'll put a couple up on the screen. Yeah. Look, Mafia! We tried a quick couple spots that were close to us to see if we could pick up a Dorado, see if we could jig up any other small snappers, but then it was time to move to new fishing grounds. There were tons of fish still to be caught on this trip, so I was anxious to get to these new spots. So what is the biggest misconception that Americans have about Mexican culture or just Mexico in general? In general, not, yeah. not just fishing. Yeah. Uh, I guess the, like the biggest one is like the greatest stereotype is, is violence, man. Yeah. It, that is dangerous to be out here. Uh, I can tell you there's hundreds of thousands of foreigners that come to Mexico from Europe, from the US, from Canada every year, and they're enjoying something that I've seen a lot of people in the fishing industry are afraid of experiencing. Well, you think this is the best uh, fishing in for Central this kind of, America? For yeah. this kind of fishing, like for Pacific, like uh, Cuberas, there's rooster fish, uh, yellowfin tuna, I believe this is the, the, the best place and the, ba and the best guys to be with too. Ah. Yeah. Professional. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was just he was just picking his nose. <laughs> <laughs> we are changing up spots. We're gonna move into a very different area from where we fished yesterday. Right now we're slowly cruising in, looking for birds, activity, big tunas, maybe some more dorado. Kind of making our way over here and just scoping it out. The guys just put out some trolling rods. I actually don't know what those are or what those are for, but hopefully one of those gets a. What are we looking for? On the troller rod. Yellowfin? Yeah. You guys gotta try the food in Mexico, it's phenomenal. So I'm getting rigged up and ready. I've been throwing a bunch of different baits since we've been here, but most of the hooks that I'm using on the lures have been the BKK Raptor Zs in a various sizes. I'm just holding a pack of two O's for instance. They've quickly become some of my favorite hooks to use. I have this uh, stick bait rigged up with a 3.0 and a 2.0 right now. It's been swimming the best like that. Stick bait's made by um, Pelagic Warrior. They sent me a couple of them. So it's uh, it's been a very interesting bait. I'm not used to using non-lipped plugs, but the wobble on this thing has been absolutely crazy and some fish hammered it yesterday. Fish in like a 100 pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, we're fishing some PE6, this is a Silk Ocean Braid, and a Shimano Twin Power 14,000. So this is kind of like our stick bait rod. Oh yeah, the Snook Mafia guys use these rods called Hawk. They're made in Spain, so super cool. I didn't travel with my rods, so I'm using their rods and my reels, but this is kind of like our stick bait setup. I have another popping setup that's similarly sized um, to that Twin Power. It's a 14,000 Saltigo with a smaller popper, but this is the big boy. This is the big one. 20,000 Saltiga, PE8, so it's like a 100 pound braid, 200 pound leader, and a giant FCL Labo, rigged with some 4.0 BKKs. This is hopefully gonna catch the biggest tuna of my life. I'm gonna show you guys some pictures right now, they're flashing on the screen. The guys here at Snook Mafia will regularly catch giant super cows. Um, I'm talking literally 250, 300 pound yellowfin tuna absolutely crazy i don't know if i'm ready for the amount of pain that will come from catching a big tuna but that's why i brought a 20,000 size reel as opposed to a 14,000. um and uh we're getting to the grounds where those big fish are gonna be we're pulling up to monster beach <laughs> are you excited yeah yeah <laughs> i've been here before i know yeah? i know what is called monster beach oh no crazy green water flying fish turtle right there this whole area looks so fishy you can see that there's rocks and then there's sand intermingled this is gonna be wild Jorge is throwing the stick bait around i'm gonna throw the popper around a little bit let's see if we can raise something full drag got a bunch of birds working close to the beach but there's like intermingled patch reef out here and uh it's like i don't know 15 17 feet deep here 
So we kept seeing different types of fish cruising down the beach. Some milkfish, which are kind of herbivores, they're like a giant mullet. We also saw some jacks, and we saw what we thought might be some rooster fish cruising. And a lot of these fish just didn't want to play, at least at first. It was just cruising. Just cruising like that? Switched it up to the stick bait. These guys say, if you want to catch a Kibera, you really should be throwing the stick bait comparatively to the popper. They come up on the popper, they eat the popper, but you're going to catch more or you're going to have better shots if they eat something subsurface like this. And where we're fishing right now, you're basically going to be able to see the eat because the water's clear enough and this thing is just subsurface. So we'll be able to see if a Kibera or a rooster or something comes up hot on it, um, that we'll be able to that, almost watch the entire eat. And uh, also, Adrian's throwing the popper next to me, and sometimes fish will come up on the popper, but they don't want to commit. So you can throw this to them, you can do the bait and switch, and they will uh, eat the stick bait as opposed to the popper. So we're gonna try, keep moving down this beach, see if we can find find a giant. Oh, see, see. Where? Ahí van los bichos, mira, buddy. Mira, mira, wey. Ahí vienen para acá, eh. Ah, I got it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ahí va, ahí va el gallo. Mira cómo va surfeando la ola, güey. Ahí se lo pasó. No lo peló, no mames. Ahí viene, viene detrás. I chased it a little bit. Yeah. Dale, Jorge. Dale. Dale. Okay. Garbage. Say garbage. Garbage content. I'm a garbage content creator. Yeah. Oh! Jack? Oh, oh, oh. oh, hooked up. Okay. That was later. sick. <laughs> Crush the stick bait. <laughs> oh. Come on in, buddy. Oh! Ah! Tail walking them. Hello, Ryan. Doble. Doblete. <laughs> we say doblete. Ah, mine's oh, bigger. Yeah, you got the big one. Uh, just doubled up. <laughs> some jacks. Looking for some, uh, you know, some true yeah. game fish yeah. now. But these are a fun, you know, fun thing to keep us entertained. Yeah. Little, you know, little appetizer for the big fish. All right. Oh, yeah. We're gonna get them released. Cool. So I don't have a lot of experience throwing stick baits. Definitely throwing more poppers. But um, this thing has incredible action. I originally rigged it up with two sets of 3.0 treble hooks. Then I saw, swapped it to a 2.0 treble hook because every single, or like, I won't say every single time, it happened a lot. It was essentially the treble hook would snag the leader on the cast and the lure would be fouled. So it just spins when you retrieve it. You know, it seemed like it was happening, you know, one in three casts. Switched to a 2.0 treble hook. So, you know, it's harder for it to reach up there and it would still happen, but happen at a lesser rate. But it was just happening a lot again. So I got frustrated. So I switched to a single. I see a lot of stick baits are rigged with single hooks out of the, you know, straight out of the packaging, the ones that come with hooks. Um, so we'll give this a try. I'm not the biggest fan of singles on lures. I just don't think the hookup ratio is nearly as good as Treb's, but we'll do single in the front, Treb in the back. It still seems to work in the water pretty darn well. So we'll see if it uh, keeps fouling or not. Jacks, jeez. Oh, so many of them. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. <laughs> oh, on me, on me, on me, on me. Oh, rooster, rooster. Oh, rooster, rooster, rooster. Go, 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 go. You think? Nah, You're gonna run out of space. Yeah, yeah. I thought they were gonna get it. Yeah. They like that. Sh it was spinning on top like that. Jack. We continued pushing down the beach, just looking for any fish that wanted to play ball. Hooked up to a couple more jacks, moved a couple more rooster fish that just weren't com willing to commit to the bite. And then we came to the part of the day that I was extremely excited for. It was time for a little bit of yellowfin tuna ceviche prepared by my man Chico. We're cooking. Chef Chico with the best tostadas, man. 
Kenya. Estos estados en México. There we go. Ceviche on top of some tostadas. We're gonna dig in. We're eating lunch and we ran into these guys. Chico just gave them the biggest plate of ceviche. That's great service. Look at that service. Oh my gosh. Chico! Primero Cubera! Look at that. That's what I came for. Oh! That's about the size that I normally catch in South Florida, like inshore. Baby yeah, a little like a little like three to four pounders, but we're looking for like 50 pounders of these guys, but still freaking cool. Crazy fish, man. We tried to do a little bit of afternoon tuna popping. There were some birds working, but the tunas were feeding on things about the size of my fingernail, and they just didn't really want to play. So we made a game time decision to move back inshore and fish some of these rock structures while the sun was going down because you never know where a big cubera yes. might be hiding. This might be the most epic looking place that I've ever fished. You guys can see these giant rock outcroppings. And then if you turn this way, there's a whole mountain range literally right there. It's a giant mountain, man. There's some of the baddest fish in the ocean right up here so we're gonna cast giant stick bait up against these rocks and see if we can pull a fish out see if we don't get spanked by a true monster because there's some fish in here that will break your heart I'm trying to make the stick bait just look like it's just like a wounded fish just those long slow pulls that the guys typically say is really good for cuberas that's what I really want, but I'll take anything, you know? There's gonna be a bunch of different species here. Roosterfish, bluefin trevally, big cubera, golden trevally, you really never know. Oh, oh. There she is. There we go, we're on. Esso, esso. Yeah, Ryan. What do we got? What do we got? Who knows? Smoke the stick bait, though. Ah, that was first cast. Probably a jack. Jack. <laughs> Bell open. Okay, thank you, sir. We fished this whole edge super hard, but I don't know if the water was too cold or what, but the fish just didn't want to play. We moved to another location that was very close to where we were going to be camping on the boat for the night, and we're messing around. And Adrian literally hooked Kibera at the boat on his popper. This thing just inhaled it right at his feet. Oh, oh, oh! Kibera on the popper right next to the boat. Yeah, are you kidding me? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It just pulled hook. Oh my. That was a grind of a day. We are all anchored up now. We're on the um, the uh, islands, basically blocking the the wind from where we are. So it's nice and calm. But it's blowing, man. Yeah, it's blowing. We're drinking some beers. Chico's cooking us dinner. Um, but man, we worked hard for some fish today. Didn't get the bites that we wanted, but we still have another full day tomorrow. So, yeah. Cheers. Cheers, man. We'll see you guys in the morning. Tomorrow's tomorrow's gonna be the day. Man. 
Good morning, everyone. We're all getting up and getting ready. Sun's about to rise. Um, apparently, last night, <laughs> Chico put a little bait down while we were sleeping, and he caught a lobster, so let's go look at that thing. Look at that. That thing is sick looking. That's huge. That's a perfect bait for the winter right there. Yeah, it is. Look at the size of that thing. Dang, dude. Okay. <laughs> I was starting to feel the pressure. This isn't something that's new to me, and it, it's not even because I make videos. It's something that I always feel when I'm on these big fishing trips. I feel like I had to catch a giant hero fish. I look backwards, and I see Captain Carlos fixated on the skyline. I look forward and then I see it, a ton of birds working off in the distance. As we got closer, I started to see massive pods of feeding dolphins. And when you find dolphins in areas like this, you know there's a huge possibility at seeing the biggest yellowfin tuna of your entire life. After popping from school to school, we finally find the right school that we were looking for. I had seen enough. I needed to cast out and hook one of these monsters. These fish were the biggest tunas, honestly the biggest fish I've ever seen jumping out of the water. Oh my god, that's a giant tuna. Oh my god! Oh my Not off. Off, off, off. I was in disbelief. How could a fish over 200 pounds moving that fast not get hooked? But I had to have a short memory. We were moving, getting on to the next school of fish, and there were plenty more where that one came from. Come on. Come on. I swapped to the stick bait just to see if we could get the right bite. I could cast a little bit further with this rod. I put it right in the middle of these things and it didn't last very long at all. Oh my god! What the f dude? You love the glory, huh? We think when I hooked up, another fish happened to swim through my line and break me off. Some shenanigans, there's just so much chaos at this point. There we go! Small one. I would learn to eat those words. Come on, hooked up on a tuna. Going, going to back towards the motors. Oh my god, this is the craziest shit I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is absolutely insane, y'all. Big tunas. Birds everywhere, dolphins, break-offs, oh my god. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I was fishing more drag than I've ever fished on a heavy spinning setup. But 
I was completely not expecting what this fish would look like when it did come up. This ended up being such a surprise. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on up. Let's see how big you are. Come on. Coming around. Coming around. Coming around. Oh my god. You move the stick bait. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Watch out, watch out. Right here is where that super tight drag came back to bite me. I was a little bit off balance, kind of falling forward in an awkward spot in the boat. And this fish decided to pull a little bit and my line started rubbing up against the gunnel of the boat. Too much tension, this line touching the boat gunnel like that, it's gonna break and you're gonna lose that fish. Didn't take much of a rung. Kind of just as being a dickhead and sitting straight down. Now right here, Captain Carlos started doing a veteran move. This is something that tuna captains and other captains that fish offshore do. He's spinning the boat in a circle, basically spinning the tuna to the surface. Typically a tuna is gonna pinwheel and if we just kept the boat stagnant, all of the onus would be on me to pull up and gain inches at a time while this tuna is just sitting sideways down the ways. With Captain Carlos spinning the boat, he's kind of using the motors to help ease the tuna to the surface and allow me to gain a little bit of line back. Definite veteran move. This is definitely not this guy's first rodeo. That's a way to wake up in the morning. Oh, I see him. I see him. It's right here. Whew. Man, yo, I am shaking. It's right here, right? Right here. One hook just came out. I felt that. Oh my god, this thing's pissed off. Oh my god. It's a big tuna, y'all. That's a big tuna. It's a big tuna, y'all. That's a big tuna. Very strong fish. Oh my god. He's sitting with a bat so it doesn't freak out and beat up the boat, beat us up. It's a very strong fish and it's very dangerous if they're alive. So hitting in the head, hopefully kills it, gives it a quick death. We get it in the boat. This is a lot of work. It's not over until the fish is in the boat. Oh my God, y'all. 
Ahí va. Ahí, déjenme un ratito. I'm in just in shock. I was shaking that whole fight. The adrenaline is just ridiculous. Boom! Oh, yeah, buddy! Mission complete! Yeah, welcome to the 200 pound club. Yeah. Yeah. My biggest, my biggest tuna ever. Welcome to the Snook Mafia. Snook yeah. Mafia. Welcome Congrats, to man. Mexico. Oh my God! Like I said, all we need is 20 minutes of action. Uh, absolutely <laughs> smoked it. We got the BKK Vipers. This fish hammered it, man. So crazy. Just an absolutely incredible fish, y'all. I've never been in a place that looks this epic with the amount of birds flying around, the fish feeding, tuna this size and even bigger, like 100 pounds bigger, coming out of the water. This is literally my biggest tuna ever, ever. One of my biggest fish ever. Just oh, such a crazy trip, man. And did not expect to have the opportunity at fish like this when I came to Mexico. But what about the one you lost early? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> could have been. I lost, yeah, I lost two. Yeah, pulled hook on one and then we broke another one off. But man, Snook Mafia got it done. So if you guys want to come to Mexico, you got to come fish with the Snook Mafia boys. They're going to put you on the most epic stuff you've ever seen crazy this thing weighs a lot so we're gonna get a couple more pictures but i gotta get them off my lap we knew that the fishing was only going to last for another 20 to 30 minutes just based on where the sun was in the sky so we fished a couple more schools adrian was able to hook up to a big fish unfortunately that one pulled hook we pulled up to another school and i was able to hook up again although this time the fish wasn't nearly as big as the first one the diving jorge is ready to go There we go. A little cute one. When a tuna that size is a small one, if I caught that in Florida, I would freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Woo! The activity slowed down and it had been around 30 minutes so it was time to clean up that big tuna before anything got too warm. So we're on a panga right so we don't have room for a giant tuna like this so Carlos is cleaning up the tuna right now right here on the boat about as fresh as it gets. I think Carlos, I think you're doing a better job than I did when I filleted my first big yellow fin. <laughs> Carlos just took out the belly there. That is what people will call Toro. The belly lining. It's got a lot of fat content in it. Very popular in sushi restaurants. Do you, uh, do you eat it raw? Do you sear it? What's your favorite prep? <laughs> Dude, everything. everything? Same, everything. man. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I like it raw, you know, like sashimi, you know. Oh, yeah. We make our own sushi. Yep. Exactly. No, but it's always nice to have a fresh fish in your freezer, you know. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't do that. And that's sad, you know, because... This is like an assembly line. We have Carlos cleaning up and getting the bloodline off. Handing it off to Chico and Adrian, and they're bagging it. I'm watching Adrian take them, put them in a bag, and then use a little bit of water to seal the bag. Stick it in there, forces all the air out. How do you like to eat tuna? All the ways? All the oh, What's your I favorite like, preparation? I really like sashimi. Okay. And then make some sushis, nigiris. I don't know what you say in English with uh, sellado. Yeah, sear it. Yeah, sear it. Yeah, sear it. Yeah. Sear it. yeah. 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 Are these giant blocks of ice. <laughs> Tuna has been processed into a mountain of meat. I'm gonna get them all into the angle.
After all the work of processing the big tuna, we were moving inshore. Chico whipped up a quick breakfast of some burritos and I washed it down with a delicious modelo and we were back to fishing inshore. Island that we haven't fished before, got the stick baits out. Lost my, uh, my favorite little black one, but we got a white one now. Knowing that we only had a few hours of fishing left, I was fishing hard because there is that one fish, that monkey on my back, that big Cubera snapper that I truly wanted so darn bad. Look at that little cave, y'all. That's epic. It's a little cave to the beach. Let's see if there are any cave monsters. Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, big fish, come on. We fished these edges and a couple beaches pretty darn hard. We moved a couple little rooster fish, had some passes by jacks, but the fish just weren't playing. I think it's just a little too early in the season and uh, we jumped the gun on some of these inshore spots. Hooked up on the stick bait. Oh, 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 throw, throw, throw. Oh my God. A Kubera came up and chasing my blue Trevally, trying to eat the popper out of its mouth. Are you kidding me? That's my first blue Trevally. Thank you. This is my first blue trevally. They get much bigger than that, but they're super cool looking, man. Very, very pretty fish. Very <laughs> interesting. That um, got some mixed feelings about this one because the Kibera that I've been after all trip came up and tried to eat <laughs> the stick bait out of this thing's mouth. Um, but man, still a cool fish and can't complain at all. We made another quick move to just try and have a Hail Mary shot at some fish we hadn't caught yet. But what happened on the way, I was really excited about. It was time to eat some of my yellowfin tuna. guys we caught a giant tuna this morning and now we're literally having sushi on the boat just enjoying a good meal after a hard couple days of fishing man very cool very rewarding and uh, I think I'm gonna dig in these guys are doing a great job Have you ever seen a Star Michelin restaurant with a better looking table than this? I haven't, man. Las pequeñas, veras tostadas in Mexico. Those are his cousins. Sponsored by Snoop Mafia. <laughs> And we're not even stopping. We're chasing more tuna right now. <laughs> we are. For me? Gracias. Wow. Uh huh. After lunch, Adrian threw his drone in the air, and he was just looking to see if he could find anything interesting. If you look very closely on your screen, you can see all these little specks on the sand, and those are actually rooster fish and jacks and other tropical fish other you know non lure eating fish but there was plenty of fish to catch once he kind of pinpointed the location we headed over there and decided to take a couple casts oh oh no, nah, rooster, rooster, oh, rooster. Lose the track, buddy. Yep. You want to talk? I'm too moving with the twelve. Woo! We're hooked up on a rooster. They came in and just hammered it. Oh my god! Oh, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. You see, Jorge? Aquí, 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 aquí. Cast, cast, cast. Woo! Woo! -hoo -hoo! 
Roosters are sick, man. So sick. Hey. Woo, this is awesome, man. Got the drone in the air. He fe literally found these fish with the drone. Oh, off, off, off. Dang it. Came unhooked. Far, far, far. Oh, a key, a key, a key. Oh my God. That thing is massive. On you, on you, on you, on you, on you, on you, Jorge. Oh my God, look at them all. Look at them all. Look at them all. Now, I couldn't believe this, but that was actually the only rooster fish that I was going to get a chance to hook. We had plenty chase us, but these fish can be absolutely infuriating. I've never wanted a small live bait in my entire life more. Um, they would chase us and then just give us the um, oh give us the God, finger. These roosters are getting us, just giving us the business. I do have to say, after 72 hours out here, I was pretty darn excited to see the mainland again. This was an extremely challenging fishery, an extremely rewarding fishery, and it's somewhere that I definitely am gonna be coming back to. Just an absolutely epic trip. We just got done running about 70 miles. We actually still have like another 18 miles to get to where we need to go, but huge shout out to Snook Mafia, all the guys. That was an incredible trip, great work. Jorge, brother, pleasure. We're gonna do more fishing together. For sure, man. Yeah. And if you guys want to see more epic video fishing videos like this one, check this video out right there, and we'll see you over there.